And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to uh, Leprechaun Friday on The Savage Nation. This Celtic music is dedicated to all the honest Irish people out there in the audience. And now we talk about Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly, the leprechaun, claimed in a show last night that he named the shooter first. I ask, how is this possible, given that his TV variety show follows my analytical radio program by two hours? Does Bill O'Reilly owe his audience a retraction and savage an apology? But more than that, he has pulled a Brian Williams. You've heard me. Bill O'Reilly has pulled a Brian Williams. I want you to listen to the soundbite that he had the nerve to play last night on his television show. It's a bald, outright lie, in my opinion. And I'm going to ask you point blank, should he step down for lying? Why is Ailes at Fox News not suspending Bill O'Reilly for lying to his audience and to the world? Listen to the soundbite. Last night, as we were reporting the breaking news from California, the factor was the first news operation in the world to identify the primary killer. Well, that's a lie. Now, of course, he'll argue that I'm not a news operation. Even though I reported the shooter's name hours before he did, does that not make me a news operation? What am I? Well, I'm a commentator. I'm an uh, analyst of the news. I'm an entertainer. I do all of those things. But you can't say that I don't give you the news. In fact, as the news was emerging, I kept asking, who was the shooter's name? And it was picked up on police scanners by various organizations, including, I think, InfoWars or Prison Planet. My producer picked it up from, is that where you got it from, Jim? You got it from the, from the news feed? Twitter, you got it from a Twitter news feed? As it was emerging, and I went on the air and I said his name is blah, 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 whatever his name is. I don't even want to repeat it. Now, for O'Reilly to make this a big issue is a big issue, because it is a big issue. Many of you are going to say you shouldn't fight with each other. We're on the same side. You couldn't be further from the truth. O'Reilly is on his own side. Fox has blacklisted me for years. And I'm going to reach out right now to CNN and MSNBC, and I'm going to ask them to run with O'Reilly's shameful behavior. I want to know why CNN and MSNBC are not calling O'Reilly out on what he did last night. Now, remember, many of you are going to say, why are you attacking O'Reilly? Well, doesn't Trump attack everyone around him? You all love Trump. Didn't Trump come on my show a few weeks ago and say, when I challenged him on why he was attacking Ben Carson, didn't he say, Michael, you're a very competitive guy. And if you were in my position, remember what, what Trump said? If you were in my position... You would also be attacking uh, whatever his name was. Uh, uh, I don't remember his name anymore. The other guy, Carson. You'll forget Carson like the other one. They'll, they'll all be forgotten in a few months. You won't even remember Ben Carson's name. You'll think it's, a, it's a, a cough drop. So Trump would do what I'm doing. I'm standing up for myself, darn it. And I'm not going to sit here and take it from Bill O'Reilly and Roger Ailes anymore. They're not God Almighty. And they made a mistake and they're attacking me. And they're not getting my credit. And I demand that Leprechaun apologize to the audience. I'm also asking MSNBC and CNN to step in on this. They're the opposition to this, aren't they? They're my opposition. And I believe Bill O'Reilly lied. And I believe he should step down. I believe he should be suspended. He pulled a Brian Williams. All of you said, oh, Brian Williams did this. Brian Williams did that. You ruined his career, didn't you? Am I wrong or right? Danny, I want an answer from my audience. And I'll take my audience's opinions. I've been following this on Facebook. It is a darn big deal. It's a very big deal. Because if we can't rely upon our news media to tell us the truth, who then can we rely upon? I may not be the biggest show in radio, but I would say to you that I'm probably the most honest commentator in the media. And you count on that. And I go where no one else dares to go before anyone else dares go there. You know that. That's how I survive. My entire reputation is based upon going where others don't go before they go there and taking chances. And I'm usually right. And if I was wrong more often than I am right, I wouldn't be in business. So many of you are saying, well, why are you doing this? Uh, you should let it go. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It is a darn big deal. 
because he prides himself on being whatever. I don't know. I've called him the leprechaun affectionately for years. He says he named the shooter first. He didn't. I did. His TV variety show follows my analytical radio program by hours. I believe Bill O'Reilly owes his audience a retraction and savage an apology at the least. And if he doesn't apologize and Fox News does not retract what he said, I am telling you that they have no credibility whatsoever. We are not on the same side of things. O'Reilly is on his own side. Fox has blacklisted me. I'm asking F CNN and MSNBC to run with O'Reilly's shameful behavior and talk about it. It's that simple. And we'll go on to another big story. This is a huge story because it goes to the credibility of those of us in the media. This is not a huge story. It's actually bigger than this, I would say, sort of petty ex uh, dispute. Loretta Lynch, the attorney general handpicked by Al Sharpton, if you can believe the turn of events, that we're living in a, in a reign of terror like this. Loretta Lynch, our attorney general of the United States of America, vows to prosecute those who use anti-Muslim speech that edges toward violence. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The day after a shootout that leaves so many dead and wounded by two Muslims, she goes to a Muslim front group, a pressure group, and she vows to attack anybody who says what? Something that edges towards violence. What does that mean, edges toward violence? What does she mean by anyone who says anything against Muslims that edges towards violence? Can she define that for me? I'll say something. Tell me if this edges towards violence, because I certainly don't espouse violence. In fact, if you go to my uh, Facebook page, you will see a very clear statement, one that I have followed on my radio show for 21 years. We don't talk about violence. We don't encourage violence. And anyone who posts anything violence, violent on my website is immediately banned from my website, uh, from my Facebook page, excuse me. Same goes with the radio show. I learned that before I began in radio. I'm a nonviolent man. So she's threatening anybody who wants to call out violence that is perpetrated by Muslims is what she's doing. She is protecting those who would hurt us. Do you understand what she's doing? She's chilling any speech against violence perpetrated by Muslims. And anyone, I'll tell you another story. Remember yesterday I said that in France they closed down three or four mosques that were known for preaching hatred? Well, in the next hour on the radio show, we're going to have Walid Shubat, who speaks Arabic, a former member of the PLO, a former terrorist. Walid will tell you how many mosques in America he thinks are preaching jihad because he speaks Arabic. He would tell you things you will not believe. Is he edging towards violence or is he edging towards the truth? Where does the truth end and violence begin? And why do we have a woman like this as Attorney General of the United States at a time like this? She is the exact opposite of what we need as Attorney General. We need an Attorney General who protects free speech. We need an Attorney General who doesn't turn a blind eye to the hatred coming out of certain mosques in this country. She cannot make every Muslim a sacred cow. Those are the two main topics. This is the Savage Nation. I'll take your calls. WJR Al, you're the first up. What's the topic and what's your opinion on the Savage Nation? Dr. Savage, the moment I heard O'Reilly say it, I was like, I was in shock. I was like, that can't be it. I heard Farouk say it. I heard you say it on your show and he was taking credit and I was like, no, like you were live while it was happening. Couldn't be much faster. I was in total disbelief. And I appreciate you challenging it. You should always stand up for the truth. I have to because I'm a man alone. No one, if I am not for myself, who will be? If I am only for myself, who am I? And the fact of the matter is nobody in the media is going to come to my side. You're not going to see this on the Drudge Report. You're not going to see this published on any website. You know why? Because O'Reilly's bigger than I am. He is Goliath, and I am David. And I, David, I'm going to stand up for myself today, tomorrow, and every other day that I'm on the radio. I will not be disrespected like this by anyone in the media. And when I catch them lying about things like this, I have an obligation both to defend myself and to call them out on it. Because if we can't count on them to tell us the truth, what can we count? Who can we count on to tell us the truth? Tell me who. Who are we going to turn to? Loretta Lynch? Barack Obama? The DHS? Who, by the way, the head of the DHS, has anyone seen Jed Johnson since this tragedy? Where is he? Where is the head of the Department of Homeland Security who let this woman slip into this country? Why has he not been fired? 
Is that edging towards violence? Let me ask you something. If I call for the firing of the Department of Homeland Security's chief for having let that, that woman, that murderous, that verminous woman, slip into this country, she passed the screening process? Why is he not fired? Is that an, is that a, what kind of statement is, am I making? Is that a violent statement or a rational statement? All right, whatever. I'm sending, look, today and every day, the rest of the day today, because we're getting there Christmas time, anyone who's good enough to get through my call screener, and I have two great guys, today it's Robert, Bar Robert, I can't give his last name, he has to protect his honor, uh, Jim, it's most days, today it's Robert's back and forth, anyone who gets on this show gets a free copy of my greatest Christmas gift ever, Government Zero, so stay in the line, I'll be back to give you all the news, views, and reviews that you've come to expect right here on the savage nation join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage my savage nation is sponsored by swissamerica.com the only company i trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver call 800 b u y c o don't let them steal your happiness that's all i can say to you that's what they want to do have you cowering in fear if we had a legitimate government, they'd be cowering in fear. They'd rip them out by their filthy you-know-whats and throw them out of the country before they kill someone else. But instead, we wake up, and our attorney general is threatening us if we say a word about Muslims, basically. I never would believe that she'd have the audacity to pander to these Muslim front groups and have the nerve to say that anyone who edges towards violence, what does that mean? What do you mean by edging towards violence? That means anything she wants to say is edging towards violence. Is now a crime in America? This is shocking. While in France, a far more liberal nation than America, they closed down four mosques known for hate speech, known to have produced jihadists. How many of our mosques are known to have produced jihadists? You think none? I've got another guest coming for you. Because we have an Arabic speaker, a former member of the Palestine Liberation Organization, a member of the PLO, a terrorist in his past, who speaks Arabic. He has an opinion on that matter, an opinion that Loretta Lynch ought to listen to. He should be a consultant to Loretta Lynch and the FBI. Waleed Shubat should be advising the Attorney General. Not CAIR, who was named as a co-conspirator in a very important case years ago. That's one big story. And the other story is a very personal one, and I have to say again, many of you can say, oh, what are you making such a big deal out of it? I will make a big deal out of it. And I'll tell you why. O'Reilly has pulled a Brian Williams. If Brian Williams had done a thing like this, claiming that he did this first when he didn't, bald lie, I can guarantee you the entire conservative movement would have been demanding his head as they did. They ruined Brian Williams' career for something, I think, less than this, incidentally. They said he did this, he claimed he did that, rather, and then they said he didn't. Ha, 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 he's a liar. We can't trust the mainstream media. So now you're going to trust Fox News? Listen again to Bill O'Reilly. This is a bald lie, in my opinion, because I was on the air two hours before him. What he is saying does not have any rational basis for it whatsoever. Listen to it. Last night, as we were reporting the breaking news from California, the factor was the first news operation in the world to identify the primary killer. Wrong. And I'm saying, why is Ailes not suspending O'Reilly? Why? Because he's too big to fail. There's too much at stake. It's that simple. And I'm asking my opposition, CNN and MSNBC, to run with O'Reilly's shameful behavior in this matter. And I'm also asking CNN and MSNBC to listen to the following clip, if you can find it. I don't know if you have it. You have the one where I said it. I, you know, I don't want to play it again. I have it on record. During the shooting, I came out with the guy's name. It came off a Twitter feed. And I need credit for it. I'm under attack every day of my life. Every day of my life, I am attacked one way or another, either by being ignored, ridiculed, or overtly attacked. And if I am not going to defend myself, who will? Bill O'Reilly? Martha Washington? That, that the disgraceful Shepard Smith who doesn't even fit into his thin, his slim suit anymore? Bloated Shep Smith now as a conservative? You see him? He can't even fit into his slim suit now. Anyway, the point is that truth is what matters. And the stories out there are shocking at a time like this.